Mark Berman here at Caesars Atlantic City for NJ.com. It's an exciting night. It's the season premiere of HBO's Boardwalk Empire. And uh, I love my surroundings. I'm even decked out for the night, as you're going to see. And now we're going to go in. We're going to catch the screening. And I'm coming back with a couple of the stars for a little chat. Boardwalk Empire here at Caesars in Atlantic City. Mark Berman for NJ.com. I'm here with Anthony Lucero. Now, listen, Nucky gave you the night off, didn't he? How yes, did he did. It? How did I get here? How'd you get it? How'd you get the night off from Nucky tonight? In other words, when, when you went to, how did you go to him to ask for the night off? All Give it to hired accent. help has a <laughs> night off. <laughs> Now, now, it, 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 you know, in your character, how would you ask for the night off eh, with the accent? Nuki, is it possible that I could have one night off this week? I have an engagement to go to, and I would like to be at that engagement. Is this okay with you? And he would probably say, all right, what the f***, get out. <laughs> you know, this is just, this tonight was absolutely Isn't one of the greatest sad? openings I have seen. But you haven't seen anything yet. I'm telling you, your jaw is going to drop further and further as this season progresses. It is so, it's a little darker, but it's intense. Who was that? No one of any consequence. It's, it's really very exciting. Does Eddie Kessler ever talk back to Nucky? Never. <laughs> By the way, this is modern day Atlantic City. This is legal. This okay, is legal. they're not going to break 1933. in. 1933. Yeah. So we can do this. Now you're an adjunct professor. Yeah, at New Jersey City University in Jersey City. And I direct the opera there, and I teach yeah. uh, voice privately. <clears throat> you, and you're saying, well, how can he teach voice as an actor? Well, I was at the Metropolitan Opera for 27 years and 20 years on the road before that. And the first part of my life was all music, all opera, and musical theater. And then <clears throat> at age 57, I decided it was time to retire. And then this happened. I get a call and come audition for this role, and I got hired. But going from opera in New York City, how'd they find you? Were you doing an aria well, somewhere? No. Well, <laughs> one of the things was uh, Marty saw me perform nine, well now ten years ago at the Met doing Macropolis Case, uh, an opera by Janacek, and uh, I don't know if he remembered me from there, but the only thing I could gather was that actually he was looking for a character for the character Jim Big Jim Colosimo so when they call and I guess he must have said called opera singers because yeah the larger the bigger opera singers are bigger than life and uh, uh, when they called my former manager he explained what I looked like and they said well he's not really Big Jim Colosimo I'm only 5'7 so um, uh but they said, well, you know, we're looking, we haven't been able to cast another role of Eddie Kessler. Now, he would be a recurring, he would be, he would be a regular on the show. Well, that's better than dying after the No, film, that's great. After the pilot. So uh, I read, and they said, does he have a German accent? And my manager <laughs> said, he has any accent you would like. And so, uh, so I went and read, and uh, they liked me, and uh, Marty liked me. And, I became Eddie Kessler. And we love the outcome because you are fabulous oh, as Eddie Kessler. You, you are you. just amazing. Well, it's an interesting thing because my entire career in opera, I've always done second banana, supporting roles. In opera, it's called uh, Comprimario. And uh, I've always done this, but and now I don't have to sing. I can drink. <laughs> I can smoke my cigars. I don't. I don't have to vocalize. It's really wonderful life but, all of a sudden. But you know, it's. But and for you, you got this. You got this regular full-time gig. You're on the series and everything, yeah. and you're you're playing his assistant. But for us watching, oh, it's so frustrating because we sit there and we say, "Look, will you please do me a favor? Just just 
just smack him. We can you would you please tell him <laughs> oh, to shut up? No. But it, so <laughs> great. You realize in true life, uh, Lou Kessel, who is the character that Eddie Kessler is based on, uh, did was a cab driver, was a bartender in Austria. He was a wrestler. Oh. He did whatever he had to do to make a living, and when he came to the United States and directly to Atlantic City, oddly enough, he worked in the, uh, the uh, was it, the, not the push cart, but the, the rolling chairs. Rolling chairs on the boardwalk. Right. He yeah. worked in that factory. Then he became a bartender. Then he was a cab driver. And this is... Well, that's the progression worked. here in Atlantic City today. Exactly. <laughs> 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 oh, they're going to kill me in this yeah, video. <laughs> they are. <laughs> but, they, uh, but Lou, uh, uh, and this is how he met Nucky. He would make sure, because everybody knew Nucky, and he would make sure that he was outside Babette's every, well, every early morning, like 9 o'clock, to make sure that he could pick up Nucky, bring him to the, back to the Ritz. But in his case, Lou would park the, the, the uh, cab, bring him up to the apartment, make sure that he was okay, got him to bed, and that was it. After a period of time, Nucky said, why don't you work for me and be my personal assistant? Mm -hmm. And that's how he got the job. Therefore... A nookie could do whatever to beat the hell out of it. It made no difference. This man is what gave Lou Kessel, a.k.a. Eddie Kessler, his livelihood. And so you're loyal. Just, you're loyal. There's nothing more expressive than the act that he is absolutely loyal. More loyal than Jimmy. <laughs> We're not going to talk about that. We're going to no, see what I mean, comes it's up. It's just the fact But a nookie wrote in his writings that... Uh, the biggest disappointment in his life was when he was in jail and they would not release him to go to Lou's funeral. And he was so upset about that, he said, because Lou, Eddie, was the finest man he ever knew in his life and trusted him with, well, come on, obviously trusted him with everything. Sure. Trusted him with his life. And uh, that shows this bond of this foreigner, mm -hmm. especially after World War One. Yeah. You know, but the Germans and so forth, that he just befriended him and uh, placed his whole life in Lou's hands, and I, I think it's it's very interesting. And you know, you're also a Jersey boy. Yes, we're in Teaneck, New Jersey. Yeah. Teaneck. Now wait a minute. That's and where they. That's North Jersey. No, that's also where they had the clean teeth. Remember that? <laughs> 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 Wasn't that the toothpaste <laughs> commercial? It was Teaneck. So it was Teaneck. That's right. Oh my God, I forgot that. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, I'm from I'm from Philadelphia originally, but uh, living here in, in New Jersey, uh, and uh, boy, Teaneck to me is just clean teeth. Clean teeth. Well, what else? Well, we all have clean <laughs> teeth. I have a great dentist. <laughs> Which shore did you go to during the summer? Well, come here. You come to Atlantic City. And now, especially to Brigantine, because that's where Lou's family lives and uh, we became very good friends with Jamie Kessel Satz and now with her brothers Danny and Larry and her sister Barry and I'll tell you why not that you mentioned Philadelphia uh, they met my brother because my brother visited us during the 4th of July and uh, Danny Kessel Jamie's brother called their sister Barry, who has a restaurant in Lafayette, mm -hmm. Pennsylvania, 12 miles outside of Philly. Lafayette, called Lafayette Hills. That's right. That's exactly, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the Lucky Dog is the uh -huh. name, yeah. And uh, uh, called them and told his sister, I found the man that can help run your restaurant. He's my brother. Really? It's, don't you think this is phenomenal? Now, because of the connection to doing Boardwalk Empire, yeah. coming to Atlantic City, meeting the Kessel family, becoming part of their family. Now, my brother is also connected and will be living in Lafayette Hills, running a restaurant called The Lucky Dog. Now, the, the interesting thing about The Lucky Dog is in New Orleans, where my brother, we we're all from New Orleans. Oh, originally from yes, New Orleans. originally from New Orleans. From NOLA, nice. Yes. The, what we call sabrettes here, there was this push cart, the hot dog, thing called lucky dog really lucky dog it's unbelievable excuse me can we get some beignets in here yes, can we, we get beignet <laughs> right now and some cafe du monde Ca 
<laughs> yes, that's what we need. Cafe au lait. This is amazing. So, wait a minute. Okay, so, you're from New imagine. Orleans. You're, you're living in New Jersey. you got connections in Philadelphia. But the no. character you play is like Austrian. And the character is Austrian. But the parents from Russia, they moved from Russia. The Russian Jews moved from Russia to Austria. Lou Kessel's born in Austria and then moves to America but comes to Atlantic City. We're going to call this the Schmorgesburg interview. This is, this is, it is. It's a little bit of everything, it's, isn't it? it it's, but the connection is so unbelievable. You're amazing. Of all the people uh, on, in the cast, the only people that came forward was Jamie Kessel. Because, as interestingly enough, when she saw what was happening, she went on the internet to find out, you know, who's, would there be some mention right. of her grandfather? And sure enough, there was, and that who was playing the part, Anthony Latour. So she calls Terry Winter and says, you know, I'm Jamie Kessel, Sats, and my grandfather was Eddie Kessler's, uh, was Eddie Kessler, actually Lou Kessel. So when Terry came to me on the set, I said, before he could finish the sentence. That's Terrence Winter. Terrence Winter. <laughs> when can I, I said, when can I meet this lady? Give me information, because this this is an actor's dream to find connection to real life. Absolutely. And and to be able to get stories and see pictures and go to his grave and all these. So when you watch. And to have, when you saw, for instance, this evening, the premiere, when you saw me hold the watch, that was the watch given to Lou Kessel from Nucky Johnson. That was an authentic watch? That was the real thing. So you, really, so you really went in to oh, delve absolutely. into your character. Well, as a, well, but not, not so much me as, as, as well as uh, Vincent Piazza, who did Lucky Luciano, Michael Stubach, who does Arnold Rothstein. The If you spoke to these guys, it would be like talking to Lucky Luciano and Arthur Roth, uh, uh, Arnold Rothstein. That's the depth that they went into for the characters. But those were pretty much... Um, common I mean those were easy enough to find because there were books written on these people but Lou Kessel was not much just at the fact that he was Nookie's right hand man it's, it's this is Boardwalk Empire HBO season two you know this is Nucky's assistant this is Eddie Kessler you are amazing I love uh, talking to you man thank you so much it's my pleasure it's my pleasure and thank you keep watching Mark Berman, here, Caesars Atlantic City for NJ.com.